I'm Carola and on Instagram I'm at from Carola. In this video I'm excited to share with you my full 2023 planner and journal lineup. So I'm going to talk about the planners that I'm using, the journals that I'm using, how I've set them up so far, and um, I'm also going to recap my 2022 lineup or the books that made it to Q4 of 2022, how I use them and what m some of my learnings and thoughts are around what worked for me in 2022 and what may not have worked and how that evolved into my 2023 lineup. So um, grab a drink, let's just chat about our lineups and um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. So these are the planners and journals that I used in 2022. And what I'll do is I'll quickly review what I used or what made it to the end of Q4 2022 and some of my learnings around what worked and what didn't work that have evolved into my lineup for 2023. So what I did in 2022 was I had bullet journals. So I used different books and um, I use them as bullet journals. The first book I used was Archer and Olive in the Traveler's Notebook size. Um, I actually really enjoyed the size, um, but then I decided to try a larger book. So I went with um, this bullet journal edition to collab with Leuchtturm 1917. It was gifted to me by the bullet journal team. And so um, I used it um, just to test out the paper and I actually really love it but I also found that the size was a little bit too big in terms of car carrying it around and having it with me all the time and so the next book that I tried was the everyday book from Galen Leather and it's a TN insert so it goes in your traveler's notebook it's blank pages that comes with grid guides and it's fountain pen friendly and I decided to try out fountain pens um, in using in my uh, bullet journal as well and while I enjoyed the size and I love the paper um, I just found the bullet journaling in a traveler's notebook was not for me just because it wouldn't lay flat all the time and I just kind of worried about um, carrying around the traveler's notebook everywhere um, and so then I went with to, to finish off the year, I used the um, Aura Estelle and Annie Plans collab. It's a daily B6 undated. And I used uh, bullet journaling style in this. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do a flip through just because there's so much information that's personal in here um, and I don't wanna blur it out. So um, I used it as a bullet journal and I wanted to try out the B6 size and I found that I love B6 as a size for journaling um, and planning, but I think for planning, um, I wanted to have more than one book. And so that's one of the takeaways that I got from this year is um, I wanted to try more than one book for planning. And also that I wanted to have dated pages. So all of the bullet journals and the notebooks that I used for planning this year in 2022 were undated and I created the layouts for in all of these books and I found that it just took so much time so if I didn't have the time to set them up then you know I would and I know that you can just write down the date and just log and that's the whole point of bullet journaling but I found that I just wanted aesthetics in there I didn't want to spend a lot of time on it but I also just you know writing the date and um, having different layouts for the month, the week, and the day. I just found I was spending too much time on it. So I decided to go with a dated book for 2023, and I'll share that in a bit. Um, I also used the Hemlock and Oak for um, content planning. So um, every week I would just brainstorm the different content that I wanted to post and when I wanted to post it. And then at the end of the week, I would do a reflection and just write some highlights of um, how that week went and ideas that I might have. And so I used the plotter, which is a six ring. The plotter mini is a six ring binder system. And um, I used it for writing down ideas and 
um, just creative projects that came to mind and I also did swatches in it and painting with inks because Plotter uses DP paper which is fountain pen friendly and I really liked using it as sort of a creative idea book and it went along with my hemlock and oak for social content and for 2023 I've actually set it up differently and for a slightly different purpose maybe similar and um, I'll share that with you when I talk about my 2023 lineup and so basically what I learned from 2022 is that um, I had a bullet journal and the social content planner so two planners um, at the same time and I am okay with that but for 2023 I wanted to test out a couple of new planners and um, see if they worked for me so um, you'll see that I have a few more planners for 2023 I'm not a one book person I've tried it before it just doesn't work for me just the way that I think and I compartmentalize different things I like having separate books for separate things uh, for most of my life when I had a planner I would have um, a personal journal I would have a personal planner and I would have a work planner and so if or when I left my workplace or I didn't need it after a year or two I would get rid of it I wouldn't archive all of my books and planners but I would archive or keep my journals and my personal planner and sometimes I would toss my personal planner because it's a space for me just to write you know um, scribble things down and not worry too much about how it looks and what the aesthetic is but my journal would be my place that would be that would house my personal thoughts my ideas reflections um, and sometimes creative bits and pieces so um, that's kind of my finding from 2022 as well is that I like having different books for different things and I like having a purpose for each book and so what I have started doing or what I've been doing so far is I write an intention in each book and so I know what that book is for and what the purpose is and what I would like to get out of the book throughout the year and so keeping an intentions page um, keeps it um, balanced for me or brings me back to what the fundamental purpose of that book is and that's how I've sort of kept different books for different purposes um, but they all work for me or if they don't then I learn from that and I experiment for the next year um, I also don't archive everything so um, as I mentioned I do keep my journals and my personal books but I don't tend to keep planners and work planners and things like that so for my journals or things that I use to document things um, what happened highlights for this year I basically had three books so I used to Hobonichi Weeks um, this was my finance tracker and I also kept tabs on Happy Meal and packages that I ordered when they were shipped and delivered and stuff like that so this kept me organized in terms of finances and I used another Hobonichi Weeks for documenting highlights and milestones for my kids and so I just noted down um, sleep patterns, uh, meals that they had, things that they liked, things that they didn't like, funny things they said, and just milestones and development. Um, and so when I look back on each year, uh, the books that I kept for them, um, I can look back on, you know, how they developed in that year. And then lastly, I have the, um, I use the Hobonichi Cousin Avec which is two books for a year, so six months in each. And I found that it was a good space um, to document uh, things that happened throughout the year. So it was a yearly archive of just what happened, but I also used it as a personal journal. And one of the things that I learned from using the Cousin, which is A5, and this was my first year actually using the Cousin of X, so um, I wanted to see if an A5 was the right size for me. And what I learned was I actually want to have two books for this, the purpose of a yearly archive and for personal journaling. Um, because I want a yearly archive for the future where my kids can refer to it and we can look back on highlights and um, see how that year went. And then I want a separate book for personal journaling 
personal thoughts, reflections, and ideas that I don't necessarily want other people to look at, even if they are my kids. Um, So I think for the purpose of that, I decided to go with two books for 2023. And um, I did enjoy using the Cousin Effect, and I loved the weekly layout and um, just putting in, you know, what happened during the week and using stickers and stuff like that. So that was fun. But I am not going with the Cousin Effect for next year. I also learned that I find fountain pen friendly paper very important. So I love using fountain pens for journaling and writing. And so for 2023, most of my books are fountain pen friendly. And they also handle a little bit of watercolor because I like to add some um, paints and things like that in my journals and um, notebooks. So that's one thing that I found was very important. And of course, the deal breaker every year is the book has to lay flat. I cannot handle books that don't lay flat. Um, And if I do have books that don't lay flat, then um, I use them very occasionally. Um, But my daily books, I need them to lay flat. So that was just a deal breaker. I've always had that. And um, this is pretty much my 2022 lineup that I used, um, or that made it to the end of Q4 2022. So these are the planners that I'm going to be using for 2023. And I'll walk through each and how I plan on using them. If you want more detail about each book, um, for most of them, I'm going to actually film a separate video of how I'm going to use them and how I've set them up. So you'll get a detailed flip through and just chatting about um, how I use the different sections in each book. So this is more of an overview and I hope it's helpful and gives you some ideas. of how to use these books if you're planning on using them as well. So first, um, I have the Hemlock and Oak Minimal Weekly Planner. It's an A5. Um, This was kindly gifted to me by the Hemlock and Oak team after I completed a 2022 product survey where I give a lot of feedback about their 2022 planner. Um, And I am really happy that some of those changes were implemented in this version. And this is the Minimal Uh, weekly planner. They have the regular size and other um, books as well. So I went with this one um, because I want to use it as a family scheduler. So what that is, is just a family planner. It's going to contain um, all of the schedules and events and appointments that pertain to my family. Um, So This section here where it's a new year, I'm going to just use it as a reflection or intention page for this book. And 2023 planning will be unscheduled events or appointments, things that I want to schedule in. Important will probably just be a recap of uh, medications, allergies, things like that that are important for us to remember. Monthly reflection and um, future planning for each month is basically just high level things that we want to accomplish as a family for the month. So I'll do that for every month. The monthly view is basically going to be um, looking forward to or tasks that we need to get done as well as birthdays, anniversaries, events, and activities that my kids are enrolled in that I need to um, sort of see as a monthly overview. The weekly pages I'm going to use um, for daily schedules. So I'm going to use a timeline just to put in activities and events that are happening every day. And the bottom um, section here I'll use for meal planning and just um, an overview of um, the meals and tasks that we want to get done for that week. So this is the purpose of the book. It's just a weekly planner. Um, And it has a monthly overview and reflection pages as well. And then in the back, it has a few notes pages, just uh, blank graph paper, which I'll I'll use just for taking notes, maybe writing down recipes and things like that. So that's, that's basically this planner. And I love it because it's not going to be my personal planner. This has everything to do with my family, my husband and my two kids. 
and my husband can refer to this if he needs to see what's going on in the current week and a month. He doesn't like to look through my personal planners and journals, so um, this is more so just a reference book for all of us to use. And that's how I'm going to use the Hemlock and Oak Weekly Planner. And for my personal planners, I'm going to be using three books or three systems. So the Hobonichi Weeks Mega is going to be a weekly overview, an everyday carry. It's going to house all the information I need to let me know what's going on in any given week or month um, in terms of tasks, events, um, appointments, things that are happening. Um, I'm also going to use the notes section for bullet journaling, um, just daily logs and daily tasks and things like that. If you want a more detailed um, look into how I'm using my or how I will use my weeks and how I set it up for 2023, I'll link the video below in the description and you can take a look at that and that will include a flip through and a lot more thoughts around how I'm going to use this. In conjunction with the weekly overview, I'm going to use my the new Midori Hibino, uh, which is an A6 two days per page daily planner and I'm going to I'm actually really excited to try this out because it's new for this year um, a6 is very it's a small size for me in terms of planning but because they're offering two pages per day I think it's going to be enough space for me to actually plan schedule out what my day looks like rapid log the tasks that need to be done and then use the blank um, graph paper um, second page for mind mapping, um, jotting down notes and ideas that come to me during the day. And it will just be a scribble of things and words. And um, the monthly section two I'll use for um, just putting in, you know, tasks and events that are going to happen during that month. And again, if you want a detailed walkthrough of how I've set this um, book up and how I'm going to use it, Again, take a look at the link in my description and you'll get a lot more um, details around how I'm using this book. And so basically, I'm going to test it out, see if it works for me. Um, I'm not putting too many rules on how I'm going to use it, but basically this will be my daily planner. I'll just have it on my desk or with me. Um, if I leave the house, I'll probably carry my weeks with me. Uh, just because it's so easy to carry around and throw in my purse. But um, this this cute little thing will be my guide for everything that happens in a day. And then the last planner system I'm using is the plotter. Uh, for 2022, I actually used it as my creative idea book and um, to paint in it as well. But for 2023, I want to try it out as a personal um, creative planner or plan out my creative projects just because I want to see if this would work as a planner system for me. And so how I've set it up is actually with monthly and weekly pages that I created myself. Um, so for the month, I just printed out a cute, um, the Coffee Monsters Co. Uh, monthly overview. And I'll just write down notes and brainstorm some creative ideas for projects. Um, in the weekly, I just, um, use the pages that the DP paper that comes with the plotter or that you can get with a plotter and I stamped the days of the week on the bottom and put in the dates and I'm just writing in you know ideas or content that I want to post and then I created I used the folders um, that come with the plotter um, and then I also created a few of my own with some vellum that I have from the Coffee Monsters Co. And I'm using them to just write down creative ideas, project ideas, and um, swatches, and also information around, um, you know, affiliate programs and things that I'm part of. So uh, I love the plotter because it's a very slim binder, but the rings don't um, they're not intrusive when you're writing and that's what I like about this ring binder. So that's how, that's my last sort of planner book, um, that I'm going to try out for 2023. And so 
these are my four, four planners or planner systems that I'm using and trying out for next year. So the journals that I'm using for 2023 are the Sterling Ink Common Planner, Hobonichi Planner in A6 English, and a Traveler's Notebook Standard with a few inserts in them. So I'll just go through um, how they're set up and how I'm going to use them. Um, if you want more details about how I've set up the Common Planner or the Hobonichi Planner, um, take a look at the links that I have in my description and you'll see a flip through and a lot more details. So first, I'm going to use the Common Planner for a personal journal. Um, I like that, that it has dated monthly and weekly pages and undated daily pages. So there's enough for a page a day for the full year or um, you can just use it as an undated and that's how I will use it. I'll just journal when I want to journal and um, I won't be pressured to have to fill out a page per day. And um, this will just be my personal thoughts, reflections, things that are happening personally. For my yearly archive, um, I'm going to use the Hobonichi Planner and a weekly supplement. And what this is going to be for is just to write down the highlights of every day and what happened um, on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. So when I look back on the year, I just want to see, you know, what me and my family did um, every day and just some of the highlights around those days. And then also for personal journaling, um, these are my creative books. So for this year, I actually used an insert for um, creative collaging and journaling. I'm just um, gonna pull out a page that I wanna share. And I used it, um, I posted in pictures. So I posted in pictures and I used washi and just, you know, just a little blurb about the photo or the caption. And um, I used it to get some of my stickers and washi down on paper and do some creative um, journaling. So I'm going to continue this in 2023. I've also set up this standard traveler's notebook. Um, I have a Galen leather, the everyday book in here. It's blank and I'll use it just for some journaling um, top line like highlights and things like that and with some washi and stickers. Then I have a clear folder and also a, one of these um, cotton folders. And I'm using the 2023 weekly insert from Traveler's Company. And what this will be for is just, um, just my thoughts around how a week went. And I'll use um, stickers and um, ephemera and um, PET tape and washi and all that stuff just to get some creative um, thoughts down on paper. Um, and how this differs from my actual personal journal is that my journal tends to be just pen. Um, so I usually use my journal just to write down things, um, write down my thoughts and stuff like that. And I think having a creative outlet will let me journal creatively with, um, you know, adding some interest and in some uh, stickers and things like that that I have in my stash. So for the cover, um, for my personal journal, I am actually going to reuse an Aura Estelle B6 cover that I had this year that I was using for my uh, bullet journal planner. And um, I'm just gonna reuse that for this, which is the perfect size. So in my lineup videos, I usually tend to mention the books that I use, use occasionally and some books that are long-term, so they tend to last more than just for the year. Um, so an example of this would be my B5 Stalogy, which you may have seen in previous lineup videos. Um, I still use it for long form journaling, which is just for like big events and milestones in my personal life. And I like to long form journal about this stuff and I can look back year over year on, you know, days that were important to me and events that happened in my life that I want to um, archive and look back on. 
And so the B5 Stylogy is going to be with me in 2023 as well. Um, another book that's like that is my five year Hobonichi um, in A6. And so I started it in this year, 2022. And I just used it for gratitude practice. So every day I would just put in a line of thing, something that I was gra grateful for um, and that I was thankful for. And I also started um, watercolor painting in it. So you, if you follow me on Instagram, you might see some of my watercolor paints, um, some of my floral illustrations. And um, so that's how I'm using the um, five year and I'm gonna continue using it that way in 2023. Um, I also have a five year midori and I use uh, this one for writing down um, funny things or quirky things that my kids say and because it's an undated book it you can use it for as many years as you want basically um, and I'm just gonna keep using it that way so it's it's going to spend quite a few years, I think. If you want more information about how I'm using my five-year journals, um, I have a separate video that talks about that, so I can link that in the description and you can take a look. Um, I started the B6 Everyday Book from Galen Leather um, for watercolor painting this year, and it's just loose florals and just trying different tools and textures and things like that. So um, I'll continue using that into next year. Um, and that's the, yeah, so that's how I'm using that book. And I also started the Passion Planner Weekly Undated, um, this year for, um, as a reading companion. So when I'm reading a book, I would take notes about, um, what I'm reading and just a little recap of the pages that I read. So just in case I don't read for an extended period of time, I can always jump back in and look at where I left off and um, keep things uh, that way. And then the last occasional uh, book is the Traveler's Notebook in passport size. And this will be for when I travel and I've used it um, this year actually when I went to um, Toronto for the Planners Gonna Plan conference. And so I just kind of um, collaged a few things that happened there. Um, the second insert I have is a monthly insert that's undated. So I'm going to use it when I do travel, I'll just use it for that month and I'll plan out what I'm doing or where I'll be and things that have to get done. And then the third insert I have in here is just sticker release. It's from their um, B-Sides and Rarities um, release that they had for 2022. So um, that's how I've set up my Traveler's Notebook Passport. It's going to be for travel and just um, when I use up an insert, I'll just put in a new one. So these are my occasional books. I have other notebooks that I use. I have so many notebooks that I use for different purposes um, that I don't use daily or even weekly, but they are there for when I want to jump into a specific topic or, or a theme. And that's how some of these books are um, used in my bookshelf. And I'll continue to use them in 2023. And that's pretty much my full lineup. Just a little note about the tools and um, pens that I like to use in my planners. Um, I love um, using fountain pens for journaling and just taking notes. And some of my favorites are Pelican, Sailor, Twisby, um, and more. And that's why fountain pen friendly paper is important to me. I also use the um, for the weeks or the Hibino, the cream whiteout is actually useful. So if you do whiteout over things, this is useful for those two books. And I love these little Midori clips. You can get them in copper or silver and they're so easy just to tab down a page. And other pens, I do like the Hobonichi free pen that you can get with certain books, the UniJet Stream, um, and you can use the different colors for different things. The, my Tombow Fudenosuke pens, brush pens are great for headers um, and just um, giving some interest to certain pages. 
And then I also love Tombow dual brush pens um, just for some coloring uh, behind headers and giving some um, interest to pages as well and drawing with them. So that's my 2023 lineup of planners and journals. Um, I hope that was interesting or gave you some ideas uh, for your own lineup. Some things that I'm interested or excited about for 2023 is using a B6 size uh, undated personal journal. And um, I'm also excited to try a family archive, a yearly archive just for things that happened related to my family, as well as a family planner or scheduler. Um, I'm also excited to use the week's mega and see if I prefer the mega or the regular. And I'm also using it for the first time as a wallet bullet journal, um, my everyday carry and what I'll carry around with me. I'm also trying out the Midori Hibinil for the first time because it is their first iteration of it and using a two days per page a six size book for daily planning. So these are some things that I'm excited to try out and um, I'll do a, an update video once I've started using these books and just my thoughts around how they're working or not working or things that I've learned and tried. Um, I hope this was helpful and interesting and thank you so much for watching if you watched it all. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your lineup. I'm curious to hear what you're going to try out that's new or things that have worked for you that you're doing again. And I'm Corolla on Instagram. I'm at from Corolla. I'd love to connect and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.